how was your evening? It was really good. So we just got back from um, the Toronto Fundica event, and it was very different from the Montreal event, actually. So in Montreal, I, I noticed, I mean, maybe it's just me personally, but I noticed that all of the startup pitches were around um, artificial intelligence. So artificial intelligence, because it's very research heavy, because they need to, to use a lot of big data, it actually takes a really long time to get to revenue. Um, in the Toronto event, there was no particular um, industry or um, type of technology that they were focusing on. So it was all different kinds of startups that were going through to pitch for the $500,000. So uh, some of the more interesting ones I found, um, I always like when, when this, this company pitches, I've seen them a few times, they're called Flash Foods and it's um, to, to uh, be environmentally friendly and to sell like foods that are about to go bad or sell them for really cheap in a grocery store. And I think it's uh, very useful both as a consumer and for someone who likes to cook often. Um, and of course, uh, my team was there too. So it was actually the first time that we were all meeting in Toronto. Um, because we work remotely, I don't actually get to see them most, most of the time. So it was really good. Um, so at the event itself, uh, we had two developers and we had um, our investment associate, Siraj and Gabriel, who is our marketing specialist. So all together, we actually had four phones, like constantly streaming, tweeting, doing like live um, videos and everything, as well as two laptops researching, adding people, um, you know, researching and just making sure that we are really on top of things. So it's after the event, people are really busy. They're adding each other on LinkedIn. They are, you know, saying, hi, nice to meet you, setting up appointments, setting up meetings, setting up connections or nurturing existing relationships. So one of the things that I taught um, our new business interns to do, to do was um, to actually add some of the people who are on the ticket. They're already on the tickets because you, you know who the presenters are. You don't know who the judges are, which are all the investors, but you actually know who's presenting. To actually add them beforehand and do some research on the, who is speaking and um, come with questions and or um, you know see how they might be a good fit for Venture X or see how they might be a good partner for Venture X. So they did that uh, the day before and they had you know, a whole new set of like LinkedIn network and everything. So I thought that that was really great and really, really helpful. Um, afterwards, um, I, we had, so the structure was that we had pitches, we had um, speeches in the morning, and then we had a lunch, and then we had more pitches and more speeches at the end. Mostly, mostly pitches in the afternoon. And then there was a small networking, um, about, about 20 minutes or 30 minutes or something, at the very, very end. Um, so what was great was that we got to meet a lot of new startups that were looking for exactly $500,000 because that's how much the pitch um, award was. And because VentureX does help you prepare and connect to funding for that amount, um, it was a great market for us to actually go and meet these startups and you know connect with them and see um, if there's a great way that we can work together. Um, the other thing is that there were about 15 or so different kinds of, no, not different kinds, different investors from different firms. So because we haven't done a lot in terms of the partnerships with Ontario, this was a great first event to go to, especially with our investment associate. Um, so we got there early and he, uh, he actually was able to add and research and um, do some background on every single one by seeing all of their name tags that were there before they actually even arrived in the room. So I always teach um, our anybody who, who works on the business side, it's always to your advantage that you know more about the person on the other side of the table than they know about you. You should always have talking points, you should come with questions, and um, he himself, the investor relations associate, is a very personable guy. He's so personable, which means that when you meet him, you'll automatically like him. The first thing that he does is I can tell by the way that he writes emails, I can tell by the way he speaks and the way that he networks, he looks for he looks for relevance. He looks for ways to be relatable to you in order to build rapport. So he would look up everything, including where did you go to school? And then he goes, oh, these two investors actually went to the same school, um, the Schulich School of Business with me. And I'm like, oh, that's great. And um, yeah, these are things that that I find is interesting because young minds will will always have an, the ability to teach things back to you the same way that your experience and your wisdom and your you know work can teach things to them 
So always be, be open to, to those opportunities as well. Um, so some of the really interesting um, VCs that we, that we met uh, had great questions and really hard questions for the startups. So the startups that pitched, they kept asking questions about their pricing model, trying to poke holes in them, I think. And then um, also asking about cost of customer acquisition and how they're actually going to get those users and customers. Because when you are a small company, I mean, even when you're an existing company, but when you're a small company, especially, and you don't have the money to like hire a big sales force, you don't have the money to push marketing in every channel and everything. Um, and you say, next year, we're going to make a million dollars. It might raise a few flags. So it really is normal that they are asking a lot about, um, you know, what is the return? What is the likelihood? Do you have proof? How can you prove it? Those kinds of things. So these questions really are very tough. And so some startups we found um, were really good at answering them. Some were not. Some, some look like they've heard it for the first time, which can be true. They cannot have heard it for the first time. Um, and um, yeah, so especially uh, BrightSpark was, um, was BrightSpark Venture Capital. Uh, I think his name is Mike. He was really interesting because he was not only part of the how to raise big rounds and was very, um, you know, had a very long career, very diverse career. Uh, he also asked a lot of tough questions as well. So being one of the, um, I think, more seasoned um, VCs, he, he really got into um, explaining his experiences and being able to to talk about the perspectives of financial investing in the future. So some of the tough questions that were asked of him um, when he was actually giving a speech was, do you think that ICOs would replace, so an in initial coin offer offering, would replace the investment industry, the traditional investment industry completely? And so his answer was great. It was, uh, he was really brought up the point of, well, we're always there waiting for things to be really proven out. And so you're, he, understands that you know you're at the tipping point of things being proven out and things you know going going um, towards a big change but it really has to has to actually show all the proof first and everything and um, I think it's a, it's a very interesting take on it because being in the the VC game for so long he's clearly has seen a lot of growth a lot of you know ups and downs and um, a lot of changes in this industry and so um, we reached out to him to see um, if he would give us more insights about the changes that he would like to see in this industry because it helps us build the investment side of the platform, which we currently only have the startup side. So, um, so I think that those are really interesting connections. Um, and one of the things that were that, you know, if, if you were in the startups, support kind of space like we are and you are not completely exhausted at the end of the networking event or the end of the event you didn't do it right so thank god we actually had so many people we had we had four it was me and then four other um venture x team members that were there so there was a there was a lot of people usually i'm just at these things by myself but it was great that they were there because they got to learn um you know who they were really building for they also got to understand um you know, marketing, customer relations, investing, those kinds of things from professionals in the industry. And I think that that is a huge benefit for people who are, you know, just getting um, new work experience in this sector and they can hear from different perspectives and voices than just, than just mine. Um, so that's, that's good too. Uh, you never know, you don't know what you don't know. And that I think is always the most important thing to, to always remind yourself why you should be humble. You can have your own opinions of things, but you know, um, you would always be challenged by different industry experts depending on where they are. And that was really showing and prevalent when they were asking these startups these really, really tough questions. So um, some of the really tough questions that I remember uh, were from Maple Leaf Ventures, um, Omar Ventures, White Star um, Capital, of course, Panache, and um, ICAG Ventures as well. So they, they all had really, really tough questions. And, um, and I think it's a good experience that 
um, our investor relations uh, associate was also taking note of the kinds of questions they were having, um, why they were asking it, you know, how it was relevant to what they were doing, the stage that they were at, and things like that. Because the more you know about um, about the person on the other side of the table, the better position you're in. And that's always how we train our startups before they go to the pitch. So that's why our investor relations associate was making sure that he was noting all the different things that were being asked, how often they were being asked, by who, why, what stage that they were most interested in, and what their specializations were. So um, so I think that overall it was a very fruitful event. Um, I did have to, because you know some of them have never been to a networking event before, um, in fact, one of the developers told me, because it was his first big like business event, he said, this is kind of awkward. Networking is kind of awkward. And, um, and I didn't really know what to, what to say because it, it's, it, it's from his experience, it's an honest opinion. And so I told him to maybe get the take uh, from some of our other um, you know, business people because they can tell you, you know, from going to business school, like I myself went to McGill Business School and then did my MBA in, in Paris. But I feel that we were bred a different way than engineers when they went to school. And so um, maybe getting their perspective was really going to help him at the next networking event more. He was a little bit shy. Um, and actually, um, uh, one of our other interns was, was a little bit shy about going to network for the, for the first time at a really big event. So I actually went with her to do the first few and collect their information, show her how I booked appointments, you know, right away, what kind of questions I was asking. And from then on, she was a little bit more um, comfortable. And it was uh, also really important that during the networking events, we were like split up because we were five people. We were splitting up the groups of two and three. Um, that way it doesn't look like we're like ganging up on one person because we're just so many people and there's just like one investor or like one startup that we would be talking to. So that was also really good too. Um, and then um, within 24 hours, uh, she just sent me seven meetings to uh, that we we're gonna have calls with together with different startups and um, on the investor relations associate. I don't know how many meetings he has set up yet. I have not checked. Um, I have not checked in with him. Um, but that is a really good turnout so far. So we already have a lot of great interest from people. The funniest startup that I saw yesterday. This was great. So it was me and Gabriel, um, the marketing specialist. And when we went to talk to him, he, well, I'm not going to say his name, but he has a shopping app and it was an idea that came about like years ago, but I, I don't know who did it. And he said, if you, I take a picture of your clothing or anything that you're wearing, um, I will know where to buy it and how much it costs. So this sounds like something that probably been around for a little while, right? Because people have been talking about it on TV shows and, you know, media and different things. I just never used it before. So we're like, okay. So he tried to take a picture of uh, Gabriel's clothes and she was wearing business wear, just like I was wearing business wear on his phone. It was a floral print, like romper dress. It didn't look anything like what she was wearing. Not the wrong colors, the wrong size, the wrong style, the wrong everything. And then he's like, wait, wait, wait stand at the wall and then she's like I have to stand at the wall and so she stood at the wall it still didn't work it came out with just totally different things and um and then he, he's like okay maybe we'll try it w with your clothes so he tried it with my clothes and he's like okay hold on oops he's like hold on remove all of the the um different accessories so he made me take off my name tag because it was in the way and, um, and then I stood at the wall and then he, it still didn't work. And then Gabriel said, so if I saw a stranger and I wanted to like see where she got her purse, I have to talk to her and ask her to stand at a wall and then it will work. And he's like, no, 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 that's not, that's not it. It works. I swear. Okay. You know what? It was set to men's clothing. And so he, he's like, let me, let me try it with my clothes. And then I said to him, I said, okay, if it only works with your clothes, it doesn't work. <laughs> And he's like, it will work, it will work. And so we tried it with his clothes and it produced the results of all female clothes. <laughs> so it didn't work and he was clearly very embarrassed. It was really funny. Um, and uh, then he's like, well, my developer said that it was going to work. 
And so, um, so we got his card and he said, uh, that he's going to call us back when it works. And so that was really great. Um, and then one of the other things that I thought was particularly, um, important was that there was a great, um, marketing specialist who was there. Her name is Wes Cow. So I actually made a video um, to thank her for her presentation because I thought she was really great. And she was talking about how things always seem smooth on the surface, but at the, like when, you know, things that you're not seeing, you're actually really struggling. And uh, she was talking about how the customer is always right, but using very tactical and technical reasoning and explanations and examples that were very specific. And so um, we were lucky enough to stream all of it and put it up on Twitter, Instagram Live, and Facebook Live. And so what was more important than just her insightful information was that all of our um, team got to hear her speak. And from their different roles, whether they were doing marketing or um, partnerships or development, they got to actually have a better understanding from you know certain experts what was required um, and what does it mean and why the customers um, you know mindsets are are very very important and what what kind of effects it has if you ignore it and so these kinds of things we thought were particularly were particularly um, special and unique and invaluable to uh, to just going to the event and so I thought that this particular um, speech was probably one of the most uh, outstanding ones that we've seen from all the different startup events that I've been to. And I've been to many over the past several years. So I was really happy that they got to learn from, from an expert, someone who has been a huge marketing power behind like Sequoia Capital and um, Seth Godin amongst many, many multi-billion dollar brands. So I'm really looking forward to the next Fundica event, which I will be going to with our uh, French speaking business developer who will be a good help to me and it's going to be here in Montreal at the Marché Bon Secours in Old Port so so yeah that's how my event went <laughs>